Hey everybody, it's Brett here with The Tuning School, and on this Tech Tuesday, I'm gonna show you how to use the HP Tuner Scanner to get rid of partial throttle knock. So occasionally, when you're doing your tuning, you're gonna find some part throttle knock retard, and it's gonna be kinda hard to chase down. So what I'm gonna show you to do is how to actually utilize your graphs so you can chart the knock retard accurately and then modify your tune file with that graph. So here in front of me, I have got a scan from my 2004 Silverado and I added a bunch of timing to the truck so I can actually demonstrate this to you guys. So you can see I'm running about 44 degrees of timing, 42 degrees of timing and we're getting, getting pretty large amounts of knock retard. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go create a graph and we're gonna have it mimic our spark table and it's gonna record the, the knock retard that's being pulled so we can actually copy and paste it directly. So let's go over to our graph section of the scanner and we're gonna right click and we're gonna select graphs layout from the drop down menu. Now we need to select the add graph icon and then select add table. And at this point we need to select the parameter that we want to fill the graph. So what data do we actually want to be recorded? So for what we're doing right now, we want that to be knock retard. We wanna log how much timing is actually being pulled from the main timing table in order for there not to be any knock. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to click to insert or change, and we're gonna type in knock. And actually, we're gonna type in spark because I believe it's gonna be under spark retard. So now that we've typed in spark, we're gonna click on the icon that is show parameters only backed by channels to kind of narrow everything down. And you see we've got spark retard here. So we'll double click on that. And we've got that. Now the unit is correct with degrees. I'm okay with the one decimal point. That's all good. We won't worry about the cell hits required. Now what we're going to do for the row and column axes is we're gonna have it mimic our high octane table from our tune file. So what we need to do is we have to go over to our tune file and we're going to go to engine, spark, and then advanced. And you can see here we have our high octane table. We'll open it up. So the column axes across the top is engine speed and the row axes on the side is cylinder air mass. So while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and copy our column axes. So we're gonna right click. We're gonna select column axes, copy labels. We're gonna go back to our scanner and input this data. So here we're gonna select the parameter for the column, which was RPM. So we'll click to insert or change. Type in RPM, and that's a comma, so we need an M there, there we go. And then we'll click the show parameters only backed by channels button, and we'll select the engine RPM. And I'm okay with using this specific channel, so we'll use that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click in the values area and paste the values that we just copied from the tune file. So now that we've got that, we're gonna do the row axes next. So if you remember from the tune file, the row axis was in cylinder air mass. So we're gonna to click to insert or change, type in cylinder air mass. So we'll narrow it down again to show only parameters backed by channels. And we'll select the cylinder air mass here, right here. All right, now we do have to copy the labels from the tune still. So we have to go back to the tune file, right click, row axes and copy labels, and then back to our scanner. So we'll select paste here. And so now that we've done this, it's already labeled retard for us. That's a good name for it. We'll go ahead and leave it like that. We can close this down and you can see if we select retard here that we have a spark retard graph that's actually showing us where the knock is taking place. So now that our graph's all set up, let's go ahead and actually modify our tune file with it. So you can see that we actually are having a decent amount of knock retard here in the 1600 RPM range and we're getting some knock in a couple other RPM ranges as well But this 1600 there is a lot of it So what we're actually going to do is rather than look at all of these values as average values I actually want to look at them as the max values So it was the most knock retard I saw in those cells when it occurred So you notice when I clicked max values I actually ended up with a lot different data It's a lot higher now, but this is an accurate representation of the total large amount of knock there actually was rather than just an average so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and highlight this entire table and we're gonna select copy, right click, copy. So what we can do is we can go over to our uh, tune file now and what we're gonna do 
is we're going to highlight the entire high octane table. We're going to right click and we're going to select paste special and we're going to use subtract. So what that's going to do is in those areas where we had knock retard, it's actually going to pull that amount of knock retard out of the high octane table. So it's going to give us a direct one to one correlation between how much knock we saw and now how much timing we're pulling from the tune in exactly the right place. So this is going to help save you some time because you're not going to spend a bunch of time trying to find where the knock retards at and hunting around the table. You can make up a graph that is exactly representative of the table and then copy and paste the data accordingly. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it helps you in your day-to-day -day tuning. If you want to find more awesome content like you've watched in this video, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on social media, and as always, stay tuned.